trust him. And Moses said to his people, they wanted to run scared. He said, God said, stand still. See the salvation of the Lord. And that's what they saw. God delivered them. See, to believe that all this powerful salvation, these powerful salvation events of the Bible were mere random acts of chance. That's so far-fetched, I don't even want to go to that. <coughs> to believe in God just makes sense. To believe in God is the most sensical thing we could, could do. To believe in God. But to believe in God, one must be open to believing in God. He must have a heart and mind that is open to believing. Open to hearing the Word of the Lord. If a person stubbornly refuses to even be open to hearing the Word, then faith will never be born in that heart. But if a person will be willing to listen and allow the Holy Spirit to take the Word of God and make it real to him, then faith can be born in that heart. That's what happened to Joseph in our text, the betrothed husband of Mary. Joseph was an ordinary man. He was a carpenter by trade. He was betrothed to a young Jewish woman who had all of a sudden begun showing that she was pregnant. Joseph knew it was not his child. So he had a decision to make. What to do with Mary? Now the birth of Jesus, verse 18, was as follows. After his mother, Mary, was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. She was beginning to show in ancient Israel, marriage was a two-stage process. The first involved the betrothal. The betrothal was a pledge enacted when a groom came to the binding ceremony and paid a price for his bride. For the next six to twelve months, that groom would go back home alone and he would prepare a home for his bride. And at the set time, he would go get his bride and bring her to his home where their marriage was then consummated. The pledge to be married was a legally binding contract to break it required divorce. And infidelity during the betrothal period was considered adultery. Verse 18 tells us, before they came together, she was found a child. In other words, before Joseph and Mary, before Joseph had taken Mary to his home and had physical relations with her as a husband and wife, before he took her to his home. She was found with child. Mary, Mary began to show. Her pregnancy began to show. Verse 19, Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded, thought about putting her away, considered it, he pondered it, about putting her away privately. He was, notice what the Scriptures say in verse 19, He was a just man. That means he was just, according to the Old Testament law. In other words, this was a man, Joseph, who kept the law. He was a good moral man. I want you to, I, that's important for faith folks. Faith begins by hearing the Word of God. And in the Old Testament, the Word of God was the law of God. The law given by Moses. The, the writings. The writings. The wisdom writings. The prophets' writings. Keeping God's Old Testament law was important for God to God and His people. For it was a covenant law which God gave to Moses and the children of Israel. It was all, listen, that was all they had. That was all that those people had to unite them with their Creator was a covenant law. That's why they called it Old Covenant. There's another word, Testament. Old Testament. Old Covenant. Because that's all they had to bind them to their Creator. It was so important to keep that old covenant that when the children of Israel were finally to enter the promised land and Moses was going to leave them and going to go meet the Lord and Joshua was getting ready to lead them, God told Moses, said, Tell the children of Israel in Deuteronomy 27, and it shall be on that day when you cross over the Jordan to the land which the Lord your God has given you, that you will set up for yourselves large stones and cover them with lime, whitewash them, and you will write on them all the words
words of this law when you've crossed over. That you may enter the land which the Lord your God has given you, a land flowing with milk and honey, just as the Lord God of your fathers has promised you. Can you imagine that? They entered the promised land and they took those big stones and they wrote all the law. My goodness, that's the, that's the whole law, the first five books of the Bible. They wrote all the law on those, on those stones. So that anyone who walked by and they looked at those stones, there was the Word of God written all over it like the gate to the promised land. The law was so important that when Joshua accepted the position of Moses, that God said to Joshua, Joshua 1.8, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you will meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. The law was so important that the psalmist wrote an entire psalm based on the Word of God of praise and, and teaching us instruction in the Word of God. Psalm 119, the longest book of the Bible, 176 verses. Listen to some of those verses. Blessed are those who keep His testimonies, who seek Him with the whole heart. They also do no iniquity. They walk in His ways. Lord, You have commanded us to keep Your Precept diligently. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep your statutes. Then I would not be ashamed when I look into all your commandments. I will praise you with an up, upright heart when I learn your righteous judgments. How can a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed according to your word. With my whole heart I have sought you. Oh, let me not wonder from your commandments. Your word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your word. This was the old covenant which bound God's people in and Joseph tried to keep that old covenant law to the point that he was called just. And friends, let me remind you of something. That throughout this entire Bible, there have only been a handful of people that God ever said were just. Just a few. Only a few. And Joseph was one of those. Joseph was a good man. And when he found out that Mary was pregnant and he knew the baby was not his, he had a decision to make. Because he was a just man, Joseph could not in good conscience marry Mary, who was thought to be unfaithful. According to the law, Joseph had some options. And he was thinking about these options. He could divorce Mary and break the marriage contract and subject Mary to the law's penalty. Deuteronomy 22 tells us that penalty. Listen. If a young woman who is a virgin is betrothed to a husband, and a man finds her in the city and lies with her, then you shall bring them both out to the gate of that city, and you shall stone them to death with stones. The young woman, because she did not cry out in the city, and the man, because he humbled his neighbor's wife. So you will put away the evil from among you. But if a man finds a betrothed young woman in the countryside, and the man forces her and lies with her that only the man who lay with her shall die. But you should do nothing to the young woman. There is in the young woman no sin deserving of death because just as when a man rises against his neighbor and kills him, even so is this man. For he found her in the countryside. And the betrothed young woman cried out, but there was no one to save her. That's what Joseph was thinking about. Verse, verse 20. You see verse 20? while he thought about these things. Okay. He's thinking about the law that he kept. There were a lot of things on his mind. He had to figure out what, what was happening, what he had to do. I'm sure Mary told him about the angel Gabriel's visit and how he said to her, Do not fear, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great would call the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have not known a man? And the angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you. The power of the Highest will overshadow you. And that thing, that Holy One who is to be born, will be called the Son of God. Joseph had to decide. Do I really believe Mary? Is what she said really possible? And nonetheless, should I marry her? 
and share in her humiliation that she is pregnant before our betrothal period is over? Or should I divorce her and subject her to the penalty of the law? Well, let me tell you something, folks. In verse 19, Joseph thought, Joseph was thinking, the most that I will do is divorce her privately. And that, folks, was a private ceremony spelled out in Numbers 5, but I want you to listen to what it, thought, what it would cost. The groom brings an offering to the, to, for the, and the accused bride to the priest. And the groom offers an offering to, before the Lord. And number five says the priest shall take holy water in an earthen vessel and take some of the dust that is on the floor of the tabernacle and put it in the water. And the priest shall stand the woman before the Lord, uncover the woman's head, and put the offering for remembering in her hands, which is the grain offering of jealousy. And the priest shall have in his hand the bitter water that brings a curse. And the priest shall put her under an oath and say to the woman, If no man is laid with you, and if you have not gone astray to uncleanness while under your husband's authority, be free from this bitter water that brings a curse. But if you have gone astray while your husband's authority, and if you have defiled yourself, and some man other than your husband is laid with you, then the priest shall put the woman under the oath of the curse, and he shall say to the woman, The Lord make you a curse and an oath among your people. When the Lord makes your thigh rot and your belly swell. And may this water that causes the curse go into your stomach and make your belly swell and your thigh rot. And the woman shall say, Amen. So be it. And then the priest shall write these curses in a book and shall scrape them off into the bitter water. And he shall make the woman drink that bitter water that brings a curse. And the water that brings a curse shall enter into her to become bitter. Yet Joseph and Mary had, Joseph had a lot to think about. You see why this was such a difficult thing to go through? Folks, it's not like today. Where people get divorces all the time. Where there are as many divorces in America as there are marriages. Today, many people don't care how they discard others. How they are unfaithful to their marriage values. Attorneys advertise quick, easy divorces. But anyone that's gone through a divorce knows that it is neither quick nor easy. It is painful. And God intended for it to be painful because marriage is a sacred pledge before God. And that's why God allowed for divorce, but it was painful. And Mary was to be subjected to this humiliating private divorce. And Joseph was not happy about it. But Joseph, Joseph had faith in the law of God. But the Lord was going to have a final say with Joseph. And I, I know Joseph so glad when the Lord Himself spoke to him about this terrible decision because this decision was a burden to him, a heavy weight upon his shoulders. And we can understand, can't we? Because all of us have had heavy weights, heavy burdens bearing down upon us, pulling us down, keeping us awake at night, pulling us down so that we're just crying out to God for help. I've shed tears over burdens, haven't you? We understand what it's like to be burdened. And Joseph understood when he was burdened down. That's when God intervened and intervened and faith was born. Verse 20, But while he thought about those things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you marry your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit, and she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. I'm sure Joseph had never been so relieved. The God he had tried to serve spoke to him and delivered his burden. And Matthew reminds us of something that Joseph knew, that this virgin birth was prophesied in the Old Testament. By Isaiah the prophet, Matthew said, And all this was done, verse 22, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Isaiah said, verse 23, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they will call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. The Jews were looking forward to the coming of the Messiah, but they were not looking for the Messiah to come in infant form. That's why they missed the birth of Jesus. 